Hello, everybody. Welcome to Away Games, the Chicago Cubs podcast. Uh, my name is Kevin McCaffrey, and I'm glancing to the side towards a dugout in a way that people find suspicious to find Adam Mamawala over there, <laughs> almost like he's tipping the topics for today. No, no, no. I'm just chirping. I'm chirping a little he's bit. Ch- <laughs> he is chirping. I guess this this podcast is it's chirpy, I, I would say. we uh, high on the it chirpy is, scale. It is pretty chirpy, yeah. And uh, we're just getting word that Michael Fulmer has actually been called in to become the the new host of the podcast so oh boy. We, we trust him in big spots and uh-huh. that's just how it goes yeah we're get, and we're just gonna keep we're gonna keep running him out there and uh and then you know it won't go well but when it mm-hmm. doesn't we will write a lengthy blog post telling you why actually it wasn't that bad it oh sure it went badly but it shouldn't have and that is uh, that is going to be our level of baseball analysis you know just trying to match the vibe out there on the uh in in, in the yeah blog store. if we're doing if we're doing cubs vibe check uh i would say not <laughs> not great not great it's, is the vibe it's not great actually we have a guest on the show today it's uh former nfl coach jim mora who's uh who's just doing a quick report on how the cubs have been doing we suck. Thank you, Jim. We'll catch you next time. Follow him on all the social medias. Uh, yeah, it's it seems like it's been uh, <laughs> it's been it's a, been a real it's been a real playground for the cocksuckers. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it has happy anniversary. I think wasn't it the anniversary or was it just Lee Elia's birthday recently? I feel like I saw that in the news. I think either or both would be a, a perfectly fine way to remember what he said because yes. he also like didn't get fired immediately, which is so funny to me. He yeah. would be fired yesterday if you said something like that now. It's it's funny that he didn't get fired. Also, I guess that's back in the day when it, that sort of news, <laughs> calling all your fans, what, what was the phrase exactly? It was something of cocksuckers? Yeah, he said it's a playground for the cocksuckers. And then he said yeah. 95% of the world works, the other 5% come out to day baseball at Wrigley, which is still not technically wrong. It, no, and also, like, who do you want to hang out with? Honestly, I mean, it, it, you're making Wrigley sound like a fun place. Honestly, yeah. snake <laughs> cups, snake cups, far as the eye can see. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's it's been a, a really rough run. I'll tell you where the Cubs are sitting right now. After a lot of, I feel like uh, out there on on Twitter, there was a lot of after our uh, our blistering twelve and seven start. Had people dream, dreaming about mm-hmm. the World Series. Seeing a lot of, I was told Jed didn't know how to put together a team. A lot of cocky. Yeah. I was told's out there after the beginning. Right now, the Cubs are closer to the worst record in the National League total than they are to the top of the NL Central. I will, I will tell you that. Uh, And I believe since that twelve and seven start, they have gone seven and sixteen, which uh, checks notes. Not good. No, not 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 great. Uh, It is it is uh, it has been rough, and it's and it's it's rough currently as we're as we're talking to you guys now. This is after the Cubs have begun the series against the Astros with two losses. And uh, yeah, last night's was last night's w- was the one where Justin Steele was going on the mound. I feel like we saw there was like maybe a tipping point of people lineup freaking out after uh, mm-hmm. last night's lineup came out. Did you see any of that, Adam? I I did not, but it doesn't surprise me because once again we got to watch our, our old pal Eric Hosmer ground into a, an easy double play, which seems to just be kind of. What uh, what happens when you put that man in the lineup, R- whether it's in the six hole, which is truly inexplicable or mm-hmm. the, the eight hole or anywhere? A mm-hmm. lot of holes, a lot of holes for that guy. Uh, none in the infield, unfortunately, lately. No. But uh, yeah, I, I, there was also Tucker Barnhart catching. Uh, Miles Master Boney was in there, which I, that's fine. Nico Horner's hurt right now. I I, right. I don't mind uh, putting him in there, but it was a really but also weak... like all, all due respect to Tucker Barnhart. His value to the team is as a defensive catcher, and he tried mm-hmm. to backhand a ball that absolutely should have and could have been stopped that led to a run in the first inning. And you can't have that. You you can't, and this is I think we're seeing some of the galaxy brain uh, Cubs catching philosophy coming into this year. Maybe seeing some of some of the flaws within that when we see Tucker Barnhart catch Justin Steele to his worst game in uh, a, a year, a full calendar mm-hmm. year. Which, by the way, I'm not blaming Tucker Barnhart for that. No. I'm not even blaming Justin Steele for it because you're allowed to have a bad game once a year. That's if fine. anything, I feel like it's Wilson Contreras' fault. I'm not even sure how <laughs> it, or why, but it is. It has to be. I can tell you exactly how it's Wilson Contreras' fault because he caught uh, Jack Flaherty, who has sucked for three years. He mm-hmm. caught Jack Flaherty to seven scoreless innings and 10 strikeouts against the division leading Brewers on Monday. 
Wilson hmm. Contreras. So somehow Wilson Contreras being a magical, good with pitchers catcher all of a sudden for one day, I'm sure he's getting all the credit for that. Let me check Bleacher Nation. Let me check all the other blogs that were loving to do the updates on when things weren't going well for Wilson Contreras. I think he, he sort of black hole energy hmm. sucked the catching ability away from Tucker Barnhart. I can't wait to see the fan graphs article about how that breaks down, but I'm sure it's coming. I, I don't want to get too, too sidetracked from, from what you were talking about, but there is this weird part of me that's like why did the cardinals make that move at the exact moment that wilson was coming back to chicago when it was already going to be a difficult situation like i have this weird galaxy brain thing where i'm like do the cardinals secretly hate wilson Contreras? they they signed him and brought him in and wasted 80 million dollars to torture him and make his <laughs> life difficult because they hate him and all things cub it seemed like not even that galaxy brain during that week. It seemed like, no, that yeah. just seems to be directly what they're doing. So yeah, it's, it sucked to see, to see all of basically the past week. Uh, you know, there's, I guess we saw well, Sunday just... was fun losing 16 to the, to three to the twins. I thought was pretty fun. <laughs> Honestly, that got fun. It was like, it's losing, uh, losing eight to three sucks. This is very mm -hmm. social network. You know, you know, like a million dollars is yeah. cool. What's cool right. is a billion losing eight to three is not cool. Losing 16 to three is cooler because it's, it's just like, it gets so it comes all the way around to the point where it so doesn't matter anymore. Sure, mm -hmm. let's watch fucking Master Boney give up five earned runs in an inning. And then I saw some, some like, uh, I think it was MLB.com maybe, but posted like the Cubs lose 16 to three and the photo they chose was Master Boney walking off the mound sadly. Like, don't, don't bring the second baseman who had to pitch into this. Don't put his face on this fucking mess. That's not his fault. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, he's no Anthony Rizzo on the mound. He's really not. Uh, he's And there's almost no one in the league right now that's Anthony Rizzo at the plate either. So, uh, whatever. Well, about the Cubs that are here, Justin Steele had his worst game in a while, gave up five earned runs after he had, what, like 15 games in a row without, 14 or 15 games in a row without giving up more than two, I think? Yeah. Was... And he was sick. And he was sick, clearly. Like, he was a sweaty boy up on the mm -hmm. up on the mound. And apparently there's yeah. been uh, a flu going around of some sort in, yeah. the, in, the, in the Cubs clubhouse. But what I was really impressed by was he, he had an inning yesterday where he just kept giving up doubles. Not even all of the doubles were hard hit. But he wasn't, you know, clearly wasn't on his best, like, feeling his best, having his best stuff. Gave up. <clears throat> more runs in that inning than he'd given up in a game in almost a calendar year. And I thought he was done for the night. He came out oh, yeah. for two innings after that, shut it down, and and should have struck out the side if not for a bad uh, ball strike call in the next inning. And I just really enjoyed seeing a pissed off Justin Steele in a game that feels like it's already gone coming back, <clears throat> writing himself and shoving for a couple innings. I, th I thought it was very cool to see. Oh, that dude is about as gritty as it gets. And, and I really, you know, do I think it'll happen this year? I, I definitely don't. But I very much look forward to seeing him in a playoff game in a Cubs uniform. Same. Yeah, he, he really feels like a guy who enjoys a big moment and enjoys. He, he seems like a guy who's able to sort of wrangle his emotions, but also as a competitor sort of trends on the higher side emotionally, right. like trends uh, emotional. And, uh, and, uh, and I love that. So it, trying to find something genuinely bright in a dark week is that. And also Matt Mervis hit his first homer. Well, that and also um, thanks to a, a terrible play by a, by a fan who did not catch the ricochet off the foul pole. Now Matt Mervis gets to have that ball, not even have to barter for it. Um, but we also got to see Christopher Morrell be Christopher Morrell, which means like he's going to strike out a lot, but he's also going to hit some of the most ridiculous home runs you've ever seen. And I mean, the two that he hit in Minnesota, the first one, which was an upper deck shot to right center, other than maybe Javi or Sammy Sosa, I can't think of any right-handed Cubs that I have ever seen do that in my lifetime. Um, and then the one that he hit to, to left was like, it has to be one of the longest balls ever hit in that stadium. I think they said Miguel Sano hit one almost 500 feet, which checks out, but Morel hit that one 360 something feet on a eye high fastball, like, or 460, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 460. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I yeah. say 560? That is Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Oh, 360. Uh, yeah. Four, yeah. It was 460. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just, that is a very difficult thing to do. That's one of those things where it looks very far on TV, but when you go in person and see oh, how yeah. far 460 is, it just seems fake.
It's reminiscent of the time that you and Ken saw Yoane uh, Cespedes against the Cubs go upper upper tank at City Field. It's a similar layout, I think, in terms of like how far that really is. It is, and that Cespedes homer, I think, went four forty eight was the measurement. Wow. So this was a little longer than that. <clears throat> I think it it shows it shows you just the pure physical skill that Morel has. Because yeah, hitting going four sixty to left and four twenty nine center right. Mm -hmm. that's like what Aaron judge does. Like that is that, that is the product of what you would think a much larger man could do than Christopher Morrell. Who's obviously very, he's very strong. He's all muscle. What's there, but he's pretty lean and, you know, and uh, obviously very athletic. Uh, I I think it's really cool to see the ceiling that is there. And again, there was also, I think he's had eight strikeouts over the last two games as well, but I don't know, man, if you're hitting a homer a game, I don't, I kind of don't care how much you're, you're striking out either. Right. Yeah, and so we also, we've seen Patrick Wisdom kind of be in and out of the lineup. We've seen now some moves uh, to get people back down to AAA to, to call some people up. We've seen Hayden Wisniewski go go down, yeah. um, which I think you, you tweeted yesterday. It's probably an indication that we're going to see Kyle Hendricks pretty soon. He made another rehab start. He looked good. Um, I don't he's, see any reason why they would. Did they officially say that he's? He's in Houston for a bullpen, and then they said he's okay. doing another start in Iowa, which I, I kind of don't. Mm. I kind of don't get. I mean, I, I, I know I, I get building him up, but even if he can give you five, why not take the five that he can give you? It, it might be the same for Wisniewski anyway at this point, honestly. Yeah, well, and especially when you have the bullpen makeup that the Cubs do, where you have several guys right. who go who go multiple innings. I, I, yeah. uh, I would just rather not waste his bullets down there. Although, like Hendricks is, you know, when you look, look at his, uh, when you bring up his player card, he's like younger than you think too weirdly it's like i think he's 33 yeah i was gonna say i I was gonna guess i i in my mind he's probably i I would have thought he was like 35 36 but i guess he's probably not that old yeah so it's you know when i talk about uh, wasting bullets i mean i guess he should have bullets left he's 33 years old uh about 33 and a half (laughs) you know years old right now and he uh but he's he's been looking good and his velocity has been sort of like i guess you could call it prime kyle hendricks it's been like 80 like 88 ish he's been touching i think he's touched 90 down in heron esque uh Mm -hmm. i throw 89 or whatever his twitter handle yeah yeah exactly so, I mean, physically, he seems like he's uh, feeling good, knock on wood. And I, I guess part of the reason they're not bringing him right back up is with the off days, the Cubs can go with a four-man rotation yeah. for a little bit uh, for at least another turn through the order. And then uh, then it should be Kyle time. Now, I feel uh, I'm blanking out now, but I don't know if you watched the game last night. Didn't, did they mention that someone was from Hinsdale? Yes, from uh, for, which is where I went to high school. Zach, uh, yeah. Zach uh, no, I'm sorry, Nick Birdie, right? Is, yeah, uh, and that's a cool story too, like him being able to get back to the, the majors. He was very emotional, and I, I think he hadn't pitched in the majors since 2020, I want to mm-hmm. say. Yeah. yeah, he hadn't pitched in the majors since 2020. There was a, a really nice interview with him <clears throat> where that he was doing from basically just beside the dugout and talking about the support from his wife and how much that meant to him and how much it means to be back in the majors. And uh, he was choking up doing it. And he came in, gave up a couple runs, but that's not what it's about, obviously. Like, it's getting back on the mound, getting back to right. the majors. And, uh, yeah, Nick Birdie, from, he was born in Hinsdale, Illinois, which is where mm-hmm. I went to high school. I went to high school at uh, Hinsdale Central. So he was born in Hinsdale in 1993, yeah. and he went to uh, to conference rival of mine, Downers Grove South. So we moved okay. slightly west yeah, yeah, of yeah. where we were. Uh, Sounds like so. a little gerrymandering to me. <laughs> it could have been. I'd, I'd, some Friday I'd, Night Light shit right there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Definitely. But he was and, touching 99 yesterday, wasn't he? 99 and 100? Yeah, he he t- he's been he, he's touched as high as 101 I think this year wow. at AAA. So he, you know, it's just velocity's not everything, but it's nice to get a mix of uh, elite velocity mm-hmm. in that bullpen now. And the slider when it's on is really good too. So uh it's kind of not only is it a good right. story, it's kind of an exciting guy to see in that bullpen now. Based on everything we've seen from the Cubs bullpen this year, who would you want your closer to be if you have to choose somebody? I mean, is Adber- it Adbert Ryder Jr., Albert Alzali? I think, yeah, I think it's Albert uh, Alzali. I, I think he, his numbers have been good. It seems like he's sort of figured out how to limit what kinds of pitches he's using against left-handers a little bit, because that used to be the whole thing, is just he'd kill right-handers and left-handers would kill him. And he's been much better that way. And I, I think he's a guy who wants it, too. And I am a mm-hmm. believer in the human element of that thing, about how some people yeah. just do want to close and feel better in that position. 
Um, and then the other thing is like Mark Leiter does have kind of, he does have kind of that like almost Kevin Gregian when he was good, good, when Kevin Gregg was good, like Kevin Gregg, I don't know. When, <laughs> I'm just Joe Borowski. Yeah. Sort of like, okay, th- he's not flashy, but he just comes yeah. out and bores you to sleep kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And like Mike, Le- Mark Leiter's, uh, his, his split his splitter is like a really good pitch. It's a cool pitch. So he has a good, weird weapon. Um, But yeah, I think, uh, I think Alzali would be my, would be my first pick among who's there for that ninth inning. Although speaking of guys in Iowa, Cody Hoyer, who we got in the Kimbrel trade Mm -hmm. is he's sitting 99 down there and looking really good. So we'll probably see him sooner than later. I would think, do we know where Ethan Roberts is at in terms of rehabbing? Is he still like a ways away? I, he must be, man, because I have not, I feel like I haven't seen or heard anything about that. I saw Ethan Roberts post on Instagram the other day. It wasn't baseball related. Uh, so I, he must still be a little ways away. I'll, I'll try to, I'll, let me try, I'll try to see see news on him. Uh, yeah, but I mean, my... obviously coming into the season, the thought was Fulmer and or Boxberger were going to be the guys and Fulmer has struggled mightily and Boxberger is now on the injured list. So mm-hmm. um, it's a little murky and I think it's not a coincidence that the Cubs have lost a lot of close games given that they've had some bullpen woes. I think that's usually how that happens. Um, but the weird thing is like I... I'm not optimistic and I don't know that any Cubs fan really should be in this moment, but we are still in a dog shit division. Mm -hmm. Even right now, after playing what 300 baseball for the last month, almost (laughs) the Cubs are five games out, four or five games out. Yeah. They're, I mean, they played literally 300 ball over the last 10, they're three and seven over over the last 10. They're sitting at 19 and 23 as we speak right now, which uh, if you're curious is three games behind the pirates, it is tied with the reds and it's uh, five games behind the brewers and the brewers don't, you know, they don't look like they're running away with anything, but also remember all the dunking that was going on against the Cardinals, the Mm -hmm. Cubs are two and a half games ahead of the Cardinals. So Cubs, Cubs are closer to the Cardinals than they are to the pirates right now, you know? So the Cubs are 19 and 23 right now. What are you, what are your odds for the Cubs at any point this season, getting back above 500? How confident do you feel that that can happen? I think it definitely can happen. I think, you know, I, cause this team can absolutely, uh, that would be winning five games in a row right now. That's not insane yeah. to ask for, especially with the starting pitching that, that is here. The Cubs could string together, you know, five starters giving up zero or one runs in a, in yeah. a run like that. So I think that's not out of the question at all, but I think it's just, uh, I also think, you know, <laughs> there was all the talk about, sure, the Cubs record isn't amazing, but the run differential says it should be. Well, Minnesota fucking fixed that real quick, didn't they? Yeah. Like they, so. Well, I think- they probably corrected it to where it should be, frankly. Exactly. So I think this, I'm, I just think this is, I don't think they're going to play. It's weird to say after how hot the start was, how, Mm -hmm. uh, but I think 19 and 23 is actually worse than they are. I think it is. I don't think they'll be, they'll play at that bad a rate the rest of the year, but you know, but I have, it's also not a good time to be not playing well when you're in the midst of playing one more against Houston, then playing at Philly yeah. And then playing the Rays, like this could get out of hand pretty quickly. And it's true. Um, I mean, given those, so that's seven games remaining against teams of that, of that ilk. And I mean, if the Cubs go three and four or something like that, I guess you live with it. But if the Cubs go out now and lose the next seven games or they lose six of seven, it's going to become a wider gap than you want it to be pretty quickly, even in what is a pretty bad division. It's yeah. It's one of those things where this, the, the stretch that you mentioned right there, it can you get to the end of may and the trade deadline isn't that far away so it's and that's you sort of want to have your direction clarified by then one way or the Mm -hmm. other right you don't want to half-ass it this team has been you know uh, i i guess you can say they didn't half-ass it at the trade deadline when they traded basically everyone who won a world Mm -hmm. series here in in a a 48-hour span but 
I would say this off season was supreme half assing. I would say last off season, but the off season before that was extreme right. half assing. I think it's just been, uh, you know, it's been a mediocre level of ambition that has reached mediocre results. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to keep tearing down, but they put themselves in a position where I do think it's likely that the right thing to do at the deadline will be to sell again. And that's just, yeah. it's, it's unacceptable to put yourself in that position, but anyone who wasn't completely Jed's league brainwashed, I think saw that coming in like I, and it's just I, Listen, I don't like man, you just got to let Jed cook give let Jed cook baby I was told Jed didn't know what he was doing yeah who told you that was it me I was fucking right like I I, I don't even think Jed's the worst uh, like I, I don't think he's the worst or necessarily even actively bad among uh among people in management and baseball but it is weird to me that for that he just keeps getting benefits of the doubt from people and mm-hmm. people are accepting a like an average at best level of right. executive as enough for the Chicago fucking Cubs. It's not enough. Yeah, I mean Jed Jed cooks in the same way that making yourself a bowl of cereal is cooking. It's like, mm-hmm. Did I assemble these things? I did, but did I cook? I did not. There's a meal. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna you're gonna need another one. You're gonna need a big one. You're gonna need a Shohei meal to save this fucking day. <laughs> he's not even getting the cereal that's like weirdly loaded with protein you know what i'm talking no. about like that at yeah. least <laughs> you know he's got knockoff brand shop right cereal oh it's coming in a box not a bag it's a box burger sorry dominic's <laughs> jewel bag, Osco. Bag, let me, let yes. me make it more uh more more midwestern for our yeah. for our chicago listeners um yeah i mean and, and speaking of the the half-ass offseason one of those components was jameson tyone who i really like a lot and i'm really rooting for and he has right. just been really bad and mm-hmm. i hope that turns around and i think that it it can and will but we have him we have cody bellinger who has been very good but he I, I, frankly we're very lucky that he's not more injured than he is because when you saw him land it looked like best case scenario that was a hyper extension of his left knee it turns out it's more of an ankle thing but like when i saw that my first thought was like that could be something that ends his season uh, so, and and uh, yeah. t- and taking Cody Hoyer, or excuse me, Cody Hoyer might take Cody Hoyer into the lineup soon, but t- into the bullpen at least. Taking Cody Bellinger out of the lineup and out of center field could not only destroy his season but ours too. I mean, like mm-hmm. he's been he's been so crucial and he's been in a slump offensively lately. Yeah. But it, you just the way this team's assembled without Nico in the lineup. It's already mm-hmm. way. It's already a significantly worse team. If you take Cody Bellinger out, it's just. I mean, it's not competitive. No, but don't sleep on Nicky Madrigal. He he got one within about forty five feet of the wall yesterday. You see that? Yeah, he well, did to right. right field. Oh, and then yeah. and then to left later. I don't know if you saw this, yeah. but he hooked one almost into the boxes there. It was very close. Nicky was a uh, Nicky was uh, I, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to cast aspersions. I'm not a Blue Jays announcer. I don't want to accuse him of cheating. But hey, maybe someone spiked the shit with some HGH yesterday. I'm not saying it. I'm saying things are possible. He was Listen, uh, showing I... the power. I did. I did say in our preseason preview episode uh, that I believe that Nick Madrigal would hit two home runs this year in the same game. I think baseball is just such a weird sport that that would not surprise me. And he almost did it yesterday. He came very close. Yeah. He came, yeah. Doing two thirds of a Diana Navarro uh, situation <laughs> uh, for bizarre multis. But yeah, he. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess he's probably gonna. I mean, he's gonna get enough at bats. You would think while Nico's out to to really i mean i don't know there just shouldn't be any more i don't think there's really any questions about who he is as a player right now but there should really be none at the end once nico comes back yeah i mean i nothing against him but he's a guy whose slugging percentage is his batting average that's Mm -hmm. what he gives you exactly and he's played good defense at third this year he's been good defensively yeah he's been solid Mm -hmm. um but yeah, it's been it's been a tough a tough stretch here, and uh, I want to believe that things will improve, but I'm, I'm having my doubts. 
Well, one thing that has improved is uh, I think a lot of people are kind of freaking out about Seiya Suzuki, and mm-hmm. he's hit a couple homers in in uh, the last few days now. A couple garbage time homers, not that that matters, but they were. No, it's yeah, I, you hit it over the fence. You hit it over the fence as long as, it, especially if it's not off a position player. If it, I, you know, I'm counting yeah, it if it's off a real pitcher who's trying to do well, no matter what, no matter when it is. But his uh, Seiya Suzuki's numbers, I think people were really freaking out a week ago, and uh, I'll tell you uh, where they're at. Right now, he's sitting at about 10% above league average, which for the guy who should maybe be your, uh, I mean, a top two or three offensive player on your team if you want things to go well. Yeah. It's not quite where you want it, but he's hitting 266 on base at 347, slugging at 4, uh, 422. I think especially the on base and slugging should be coming up too. He didn't really have a spring training. He's a guy I'm just going to say, I feel like uh, he's getting better. Yeah, they need, of all, they need of him all the to things better. to worry about in Cubs land, I don't, I don't put him on that list. No, I'm not worried at all about him in that way. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Cubs twenty oh, yeah. twenty three. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I think, one the uh, an exciting thing to watch over the next couple of weeks is we're going to have Hendricks back. Maybe by the next time we record an episode, we should at least yeah. have the assignment. We should know the day mm-hmm. he's coming back. And our friend Ken Schultz said that one of his goals as a uh, in-person Cubs fan for the year was to try to go be there at the uh, at the Kyle Hendricks return game. So if you're listening to this and you're in the Chicago area, that might be a nice thing. Maybe keep an eye out over the next week or so to see when Kyle Hendricks is coming back. I would love to see uh, him get a really good reception returning as, uh, you know, the last man standing from those championship teams. Yeah, yeah and we'll see when uh, when Nico's back. I, it's sad that I have to give the Cubs credit for things like this, but, like, I'm glad they didn't dilly-dally on putting him on the IL as they mm-hmm. have in the past. Like, I think they gave it, like, a day or two, I think, Clearly, he was like, yeah, this is not getting better overnight. And they were like, all right, well. Yeah. Well, especially when we're talking about the ends, the edges of the uh, the roster here and like waiting to call guys up or not. Yeah, you know, like let's let's have let's have this roster 26 at all times. I mean, that shouldn't mm-hmm. be that should not be a huge demand or a huge request. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I, am, I I'm glad they did that, too. Yeah. Uh, any other any other Cubs related thoughts or thoughts from around the league from around Jed's league? Uh, from around Chad's league. No, not really. I mean, I'm sure we, we were referencing at the beginning, the uh, Aaron Judge thing was interesting where he peeked at the dugout and then the Blue Jays announcers pointed it out. He hit a homer on the next pitch, which was mm-hmm. a f- flat over the middle slider that was the six straight slider the guy threw also. Um, it was interesting to be accusing like the Yankees of of that, of like, I guess, signaling Judge from the dugout because that's like not cheating i think like yeah unless they're using <laughs> trash cans or some sort of uh device like e- it's one of two things either aaron judge isn't lying and he really was getting annoyed at his teammates for chirping at the umpire during a, a game in which they were winning six nothing after boone already got was, thrown out yeah right or he was actually getting some sort of intel and if you're the blue jays fucking clean it up mm-hmm. part of the game sorry yeah yeah I, I i feel the same way there um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a, I don't think there was any other, any other big national stories that caught my eye in the last couple of days. Um, no, not really. Bryce, Bryce was pretty angry in, uh, in Colorado. That was, I don't know if you saw that. that <laughs> I did see fun. that. There was some, uh, some guy who, I don't know, some no name dude on the Rockies was talking shit basically to the uh to the Phillies dugout and Bryce came flying out and there was a lip reader did you see where he yeah, said I yeah. don't I I don't have this verbatim I don't know if you do but he was like mm-hmm. you're a loser fucking organization basically he said which is just like I mean it's very true it's too bad his buddy Chris is over there uh yeah. who's up to five homers now by the way but um yeah that 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 was uh I I did enjoy enjoy that little dust up that was good let me just pause for a moment to think about Bryce Harper having been in a Cubs uniform and our lives being different. It's All the, right, done. Yeah. The, the number one sliding doors moment, I think. Yeah. Would have been neat. 
uh, uh all right. at the same time daniel descalso bryce harper what's the difference really oh boy yeah i mean there's let's find some efficiency out there everyone watches fucking moneyball and wants to be a genius how about you pay the good players and move forward maybe well, we'll the do rays that again are proving day. that you don't have to i mean yeah really. yeah yeah then then be the fucking rays <laughs> then do <laughs> then do it pick one or the other uh, all right, that's it for this week. We're at Away Games Pod on Twitter and all the things at Away Games Pod. Adam, any plugs on the way out? Los Angeles people, I'm headlining a show Ooh. one night only. Hell yeah. Tuesday, June 6th at the Crow Comedy Club in Santa Monica. $15 presale, 20 at the door, free parking. That's right, Los Angeles. Ooh. You heard me. Free parking. I mean, that's that's worth it on its own. You can catch me this weekend. I'm in Buffalo, New York this Thursday and Friday, uh, I believe May 18 and 19. Uh, the Thursday's already sold out, but Friday has more tickets. The Saturday in Cincinnati, I'm doing two shows uh, on Saturday and then Sunday in Frederick, Maryland. You can find all those dates at my we- on my website, on my Instagram at Kevin McCaff, whatever. Yep. And tomorrow is my birthday, May 18th. And I promise you the Cubs will not lose on my birthday. You worked it out so well. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get rained out in a dome and play tomorrow and lose. <laughs> that would be It'll amazing. Be a leaky dome. <laughs> oh, God, that would. Now I'm rooting for it. I so am. <laughs> Happy birthday, Adam. Happy birthday.